The island mourned, but the stain of his tragic remains. He wasn't afraid to speak his mind on any issue. Ricardo Bardalio. Ricardo Bardalio was a great governor, even if he made a bunch of mistakes. He was a highly charismatic person, but also highly controversial. He wasn't afraid to speak his mind on any issue. Bardalio has done a numerous amount of things that changed our island during his government. One of the first things that Bardalio did was called Operation New Life, and what that was was basically taking Vietnamese refugees from Vietnam after they evacuated during an invasion. Eventually, they all rioted, and Bardalio sent over 100,000 of them back home to Vietnam. Ricardo Bardalio devoted his life to Guam. People call him the Builder. He built a government house. Emergency Operations Center, the Sagan Dinanya, the Second Guam International Airport. He built the Northern Area Health Center. He built villages, playgrounds, and parks. That's how much he cared about children. There is also the development of tourism, which was great for our economy because it brought in a lot of money, and it still does to this day. Governor Bradali also improved the quality of public service all over Guam. About 19 business firms went bankrupt and two major hotels ceased operations and many were under the red zone. All these bankrupts and foreclosures led 8,800 people jobless. Governor Bredalio helped Guam's economy grow by using millions of dollars for projects such as sewers, pipelines, highways, bridges, airports and the governor's house. This would not be possible if the Congress didn't grant Governor Bradalio $82 million with the addition of $367 million from the U.S. government. The money was used to reconstruct Guam from the major event that happened in 1976, the Super Typhoon Pamela. About $500 million worth of destruction was taken place during that time for the typhoon. And most of it was rebuilt by Governor Bradalio's supervision. Many new things were built, including a new airport, a new building for Guam Memorial Hospital, a sewage treatment plant, and reservoirs. He handled the accreditation status of UOG and founded Guam Community College. Our education to him was very important. He was a great person for what he did for our island, and a lot of people admired him for it. Many leaders today still credit him for being their inspiration. That's not all though. There is still a lot of accomplishment he's done, and he's just one governor. And Ricardo's not the only one. His wife, Madeline Berdalio, who he encouraged to run for Guam's legislature, is now in Washington, D.C. as a representative for Guam. She's working for Guam for us to have more freedom. He did so much for the island. He was a really good politician and a great public speaker. But what he was proud of the most and what he loved the most was being a farmer. He had these manzanita trees, and even when everything was going completely downhill, you could still see him calmly trimming those trees. He was convicted of multiple and various kinds of crimes, such as bribery, conspiracy to obstruct justice, and witness tampering. He was sentenced to nine years in prison and had to pay thousands of dollars for fines, restitution, and assessment fees. Then one day, something tragic happened. Our beloved Governor Bredalio had committed suicide in Haganya, Guam. On January 31st, 1990, Ricky Bardalio wrote a letter to his loved ones and supporters thanking them for all they've done for him. It was several hours later that he proceeded to kill himself.
found wrapped in a bomb flag, chained to the statue of Chief Kapua, and used a 38 caliber pistol to shoot himself. Ricardo Berdalio's death had a very big impact on the people of our island. Some people even refused to believe the death happened. Judith Guthard Stevens said, many people died a little when he died. About a week after he killed himself, hundreds of people joined together to say one last goodbye to Ricardo Berdalio. They even sang his favorite song titled, You'll Never Walk Alone. His death was quite tragic. The person who made Guam flourish and prosper had killed himself because he was convicted of multiple crimes. This led the hearts of Guam broken for a very long time. But Governor Ricardo Berdalio's actions will always be remembered in the minds of Guam. When Berdalio died, he had been mourned, but the stain of criticism remained. Verdalia may have made mistakes, but everyone does. The only thing that matters is that he made so many changes and did so many things for us. And he always believed that we could do so much more. And that's what he worked for. That's what he wanted for us. A better, brighter, happier future for Guam. For us. And he believed in that future. I see a Guam where every person has gainful employment. Where every family can afford nourishing food. Decent clothing and a home that is adequate to their needs. I see a Guam where the educational system provides our youth with the trades, skills, and professions to permit them to take their place in a growing economy and be proud of their contribution to that growth. I see a commonwealth and a constitution that guards every citizen's rights and privileges of Guamanians and Americans. I see a government that is honest, responsive, sensitive, to the will of its constituent, accessible, and open to public scrutiny at all times. These things and many others are not dreams. They are just over the horizon, in the bright light of Guam's future. They must be achieved, accomplished, and preserved. The family, the island, and the future. We are traveling in the right direction. Things are definitely more encouraging than they were four years ago. Given the time and the confidence of the people of Guam, we need to secure the benefits of that growing future for you and your children.